All right, thank you. Uh, let's let's hope the sound works this time. Um, but Tim, let me know if it uh, if it doesn't. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's talk about historian. I wanted to start off by telling you guys about uh, the store and forward uh, configuration option. Now, some of you may know uh, about this already, uh, as this is sort of a standard implementation that will occur automatically on every install. But um, in case you don't know about some of the backend components, Historian has a Windows process that uh, will run, and I've got my little, uh, I've got a little system block diagram here to to help explain this. Essentially, in this example diagram, I have a PLC connected to a system platform PC that is then connected to two Historian PCs, one primary Historian PC and a backup. Uh, and actually, if you remove in your head these two connections, um, for simplicity's sake, uh, it'll help with the explanation because these two connections actually are not even needed. Um, and they make the explanation more complicated. So essentially, imagine that your PLC is sending data to your system platform PC, which is then sending data to your uh, two historian PCs. The system platform PC will run uh, what's called the industrial data acquisition subsystem uh, Windows process in the background. And if you have store and forward capability enabled, uh, and by the way, store and forward capability will um, uh, is a process that you can run whether you're running system platform or edge uh, or even uh, some other type of SCADA platform. Uh, you can run this, uh, they call it an IDAS, uh, this industrial data acquisition subsystem process. You can run this in the background on that system platform PC so that if I lose connection between my primary historian PC and my system platform PC, for example, that's okay. It's not as if I'm going to permanently lose data on my primary historian PC. What will happen is my system platform PC will begin to store that same data until the connection to my primary historian PC is brought back online. And so this can be really quite useful if you want to ensure that, well, I mean, there may be breaks in your connection between your historian PC and your system platform PC, right? Uh, cable gets unplugged. Uh, network potentially goes down temporarily, something like that, your system platform PC will continue to store that data until uh, the connection is renewed. Okay, um, and I wanted to show you guys this as well. I believe this is the, uh, if you're interested in seeing this in more detail, I believe the top uh, chart is in the system platform installation guide and the bottom here this is a uh, a historian storage calculator that we have internally that we can uh, uh, work with you guys on so I've just included some example calculations but if you're interested in running these calculations let myself or your account manager know and we can have a design review and go through it in more detail but essentially you can see at the top here you have the storage item size in bytes for all of the different uh, tag data that you can store within Historian. And at the, and at the bottom here, we've uh, I've just run some, some arbitrary numbers through this calculator. And so in the bottom right, you can see for all of the different tags that I've included in this calculation, you can see total tag count. I've got some, you know, a million tags in there, overall rate of values uh, stored in values per second. Uh, total storage per day, again, you know, 80 gigabytes of storage. Um, and then I think in the bottom left here, you can see number of outages per day that I've uh, estimated. So if you've never run through this type of calculation, again, schedule a design review with us. Uh, we can go through these numbers with you, but um, uh, some customers ask for these type of computations and uh, we can help you with them. 